Hi, welcome to Actual LOL. Next week I'm headed off to Essen in Germany for Spiel 18, which is the big European board game convention. I've been for the last two years, had an amazing time, and I can't wait to go back. At Essen, there's going to be over a thousand games released. And I have gone through the list, read every description, and then read a lot, a lot of rule books, watched videos, looked at people's comments to try to whittle down the games that I'm most interested in. It's something that I really enjoy doing, but it takes a lot of time. Um, and so I've put together my anticipated games list. There's also many other games beside this because you never really know until you play something uh, that I'm also interested in looking into. I'm also going to be making another video called The Hottest Games at Essen. Please look out for that. Um, those are basically games that are coming out at Essen that I've been able to get my hands on earlier. So I've already played them. I already like them and can recommend them. Um, so if you watch this video and you think there's some games that are really obvious that I'm missing, it's probably because they're in that video instead. So in this video, it's games that I haven't played or haven't got my hands on yet, um, and I'm most excited to try this year at Essen. If you're going to Essen and you see me walking around the halls, please come and say hello. I'm going to have my Timmy badges with me. I'm also going to be working for half the time on the Fog of Love booth. Uh, so if you'd like to come over and say hi, that's the best place to find me. I'm going to be there on Friday morning from 10 until 2, Saturday morning from 10 until 2, and Sunday afternoon from 1 p.m. until it closes. So that's the best place to find me, otherwise I'll just be wandering around. I'm also, uh, I've got some prints that I'm going to be selling. This is of the uh, Last Supper image, um, or Last Game Night uh, image that's on the YouTube channel, and then I've got one of Timmy. Uh, those are five euros if you'd like one of those. And so, yeah, i uh, please come and say hi. Unfortunately, we're not going to be doing a social gathering with uh, No Pun Included and John Gets Games and Semi Co-op this year just because the venue was taken and it's just a huge amount of work to try and organize. So I'm really sorry about that. Uh, but really looking forward to seeing some of you around the halls. And I uh, just wanted to say before I start the list that a um, big thank you to Eric Martin from Board Game Geek for putting all this together, collating all that information. The amount of work it must take is insane. And also huge thanks to Tabletop Together because I use their tool to kind of order and plan my lists and print them out for taking around the halls and working out what to do. So there's links to both of those in the description. This video wouldn't exist without the support of my Patreon backers. So if you find this video useful, please consider backing at patreon.com forward slash actual And number 20 is Volfosten. This is from Zop Verlag and that word in, in English just means idiot. This is a speed reaction game where you're trying to grab something. So think of Ghost Blitz, Jungle Speed. I've got a lot of games like that that I really like. And I'm always, well, I wouldn't say I'm always looking for a new one because actually I think I've kind of got it covered a bit with games like Not So Fast that I reviewed not that long ago um, and Rainbow Rage I really like. So there's, there's a lot out there that do a good job, but then I keep seeing ones where companies are just kind of mixing up, they're ch bringing new ideas to it. And this one just seems uh, very interesting. It has these wooden sticks that you're trying to grab with different symbols on and you're rolling dice, which is telling you which stick to grab, but you're, I think you're having to work out quite which one it is. Um, and then there's also these extra dice that you can to involve. So you can advance the game by bringing in the ability to kind of, well, the need to do actions before you pick it up or make certain sounds when you pick it up. So I like the idea of it being quite a simple game that you can then make even sillier because that's often where these games go. Um, also, the, there's a first, second and third winner. So I think it's about trying to grab the stick that matches the rules closest, but I think you can still get points even if you grab like the second best stick. And I like that, that's why I really like Not So Fast because it isn't just about being the fastest, It's there's still kind of second and third place prizes and that tends to make the game more balanced. So I, yeah, I, I tend to like these games, but whether it can kind of beat out other games in my collection, I don't really feel like a collection needs more than, you know, really for most people one, but for me maybe sort of two or three. Um, but definitely keen to try it and see if it, if it does impress. That's Volfosten from Zoc. And number 19 is One Week Ultimate Werewolf from Bezier Games. 
And this is a bigger version of their, they've got a whole line of games called One Night Ultimate Werewolf. I'm sure you've heard of them. This is a game that plays in sort of five minutes with an app um, that is based on the original werewolf game. So we're talking hidden traitor game where you're trying to hide, not give away that you're the werewolf and uh, basically win the game. Or you're a villager and you're trying to win with the other villagers. And then the one night ultimate werewolf brings in these extra roles that make it more interesting. So you have the tanner who wants to be killed. And so he will win if he gets killed at the end of it. And this is a, a an evolution of that idea where they're bringing in rooms that you're going to be going in. You're obviously playing over a week. There's multiple nights. Um, each day you will be doing an action that is face up. And then at nighttime you'll be doing a secret action. And there are roles just like in the one night games. And at the end of it, you'll be picking someone to kill, whether it's a werewolf, a villager or a tanner. Uh, that will determine who wins the game, whether you win on your team or not. So I like the general conceit of these games. I don't tend to get to play them as often as I'd like, uh, just because I don't have loads of friends that really like them. Um, but when I play them, I really enjoy them. So that's why it's maybe a bit lower down the list, just because in terms of getting it played, I like the sound of what they're doing, but I think it's really going to come down to playing it. But my one fear, I suppose, is that do you give away who you are, um, you know, is it easy to stay hidden for that whole 45 minute game? Um, you know, I think in something like Battlestar Galactica, generally I found it to be great and Dark Moon as well, but it occasionally has been ruined by just one person, it being really obvious that they're the traitor and then the game kind of just becomes a bit, you're just going through the motions. Hopefully that won't happen here. Um, also looks like it's got some really nice components um, so yeah, that's one week ultimate werewolf. And number 18 is Kitchen Rush, Piece of Cake. This is from Artipia Games. And this is an expansion for Kitchen Rush that came out of last year's Essen. I've done a full review of this game. I love it. Please check that out. But in simple form, it's a real-time cooperative game where you're trying to run a restaurant and serve customers. And it's really hectic and you're using sand timers as your workers. And uh, yeah, it's just a lot of fun, that game. And of course, I love that game, so I'm gonna wanna try an expansion for it. What the expansion adds is desserts. So you're bringing in some uh, new recipe cards that you're trying to uh, make desserts for your customers. You've also got these new ice cream balls that are these wooden round balls. Uh, there's a freezer where you keep these things in. I believe you also have to refrigerate certain desserts, much like if you were to put it in the oven, you now have to put it in the fridge. Um, You've also got a uh, special workers that uh, enhance the game where they are, it's an extra long sand timer. So it lasts longer than the other ones, uh, but it does a much more powerful action. So that's interesting. I'm hoping that that changes not only the normal game, well, not only the desserts, but also the normal game as well. So maybe a modular thing, um, but it's really just a case of, I love the game. I, I want to see what more they do with it. I did feel that the base game already had a lot of content for you to get through, uh, especially, especially, I suppose, because it was a Kickstarter, but um, the ice cream balls do look really cute. And I think it's one of those things where you just always want that bit more. You want to see how they've changed things up. So that's Kitchen Rush, piece of cake. Number 17 is a very similar story. This is This War of Mine, Tales from the Ruined City. So this is an expansion for the game This War of Mine, which is in my top 20 games of last year. And in fact, I think this game has grown in my estimation since uh, I made that list because I've played it more. I love what this game does, which is a cooperative experience with really rich story about surviving the horrors of a war. It's incredibly mature and adult in its theme. It tells really well-written stories and it feels tense and stressful but in a, game, in a way that I find entertaining, in the way that I find um, heavy TV shows or films entertaining. I like being in that story and experiencing something different. And I think This War of Mine is an incredible game that I would recommend everyone try at least once if, you know, as long as they think it's not going to be, you know, really upsetting for them. The expansion, as I understand it, is actually almost a redo of some of the stuff that was in the Kickstarter 
and then there's been some more added on. So um, I believe if you back the Kickstarter, you might already have some of the, the these parts, but they've kind of updated it, um, maybe improved it slightly. I don't know if it's a balance issue or maybe they just added to it. And then I think there's some other modules that are bringing it in. But again, it just comes down to this is a game that I love and I want to see more of it. But also I want to, I kind of, it's like knowing that you're still in the kind of first few chapters of a uh, of Game of Thrones, right? But you know you love it so much that you've already bought all the other books. I know that I want to play this game for a long, long time and keep experiencing it. So it's not that I need this content now, but I, I, I can imagine coming back to it in 10 years and... I want that. I want it to just go and go and go. Yeah, just like a TV show that you love that never ends. For it, to give you another analogy, so that is this war of mine, Tales from the Ruined City. At number sixteen is City of Gears from Grey Fox Games. This one is co-designed by Daryl Andrews, who made Sagrada. He's uh, he's doing a lot that people are happy with at the moment, and so that's enticing. But really, what has pulled me in with this one is that it sounds different. Uh, it's not even so much the theme, it's just the way the game plays and sounds doesn't sound like anything else out there. It's a strategy game that plays in about an hour. Uh, it's got some interaction and that's good for me because generally if it's, if it's a Euro strategy game and it doesn't have interaction, that doesn't interest me so much, you are putting out robots in this city and you are building these bridges with these plastic cogs, these nice pieces, and connecting up different regions that you can move through. But also when you take actions, I believe it chains back to where you have your link to other tiles in the game. There's area control and worker placement. It's It's been a hard one for me to understand completely how it works without playing it. Um, but Tom Vassell absolutely raved about it. It certainly has a nice production to it and it just sounds different. And coming from Grey Fox Games who have made games that I like and also Daryl Andrews, I feel like there's there's something coming together there that means I need to try that. So that's City of Gears. And number 15 is Dawn of Peacemakers from Snowdale Design. This is another game that is just completely different to anything else. So I don't think there's ever been a game like this and that's why I'm interested in it. It's a game about trying to stop a war. So actually, when you look at the board, the gameplay, it looks like a war game with some miniatures, a bit like if you played Memoir 44, you've got some uh, map tiles and some figures in a battle. Uh, but actually what you're doing is working cooperatively with the other players to stop that war from happening. You are, you are sort of in the world, you're on the board, uh, but you're trying to inhibit the, the the different factions that are warring, do certain things to put them off the idea of fighting each other. That's an interesting theme. Um, the gameplay itself looks, you know, like I say, the board looks a lot like a war game and you are still playing cards and having an influence over this battle. So it's kind of interesting that it, it it's about stopping a war, but also feels you know, and looks a fair amount like a war game uh, from first glance. Um, but I, I, I don't mind war games. I like Memoir 44 and I've enjoyed other ones. So that, that wouldn't be a problem for me necessarily. And I certainly like the, the twist on the theme. Um, it also has a campaign. So I, I've seen the playthrough that Antlab Games did and I've watched Rado talk about it and he's talked about how interesting it, but he also has alluded to other things being revealed later in the campaign and he didn't want to spoil it at all. So. Um, that's also got me intrigued. Uh, so we'll have to see what gets revealed and whether it whether it changes it or it, whether it's just a story thing. I don't know. That's Dawn of Peacemakers. And number 14 is Cupcake Empire from Ludanova. This is a strategy game about running cupcake shops. You are baking cupcakes, you're selling them, you're expanding your stores. The thing that attracts me the most about this game is it's one of the best looking covers of a board game I've ever, ever seen. I, I think it's stunning. And then if you look at the, the board laid out, it's so pretty, it pops, like there's so much color to it, it's so vibrant. Um, but that cover art, I'm just so impressed by that. 
Um, so that that hooks me. That that starts to tell that story. Uh, and then the board set up. It's uh, yeah, really really pretty. It's a dice game, and you are um, the the dice are sort of determining what actions or how well your actions will do depending on what you um, you know which column you pick um, and w what dice you have in each. And so yeah, like I say, you'll be baking things. You'll be um, frosting them. Then you've got these cool meeples that are colored as to what cupcakes they want. And so that tells you which effectively like orders, you have to then fulfill those orders there on a map and you're delivering cupcakes to them. You can also expand your stores and also bring in new workers, which are those dice. Um, so seems like a sort of midweight strategy game. Um, I'm really hoping that I like the game play because I certainly love, it's a different theme. I love kind of, I love the restaurant theme of Kitchen Rush. I love that kind of um, very relatable job type theme that's set in a real world. Um, and I love the artwork. So just really hope that gameplay uh, clicks for me. That's Cupcake Empire. And number 13 is Bad Bones from Sit Down Games. This is the company that brought us Magic Maze, which was my favorite game of last year. So I'm always going to be looking at the games that they're doing. And in fact, they've got an expansion for Magic Maze coming out called Hidden Rolls, which I'm certainly going to be checking out. Isn't on this list just because it seemed kind of a small thing. Um, but Bad Bones has got me excited as well, really because they tend to make my kind of style of game. They tend to make games that are sort of family weight, gateway type games, but with something different going on, uh, interesting mechanisms, hopefully interactive, although maybe not always. And, um, and, and uh, appealing look to them as well. So uh, Bad Bones is a tower defense game where you have a map and everyone's got a separate map and you have these skeletons that are coming in to destroy your tower and you're having to fight them off by moving around and set traps for them. What I'm intrigued about with this game is that there's a beginner game and an advanced version. And so you start off with a beginner version and that's quite simple, very accessible, and then the advanced version brings in lots of interesting traps and you can also play cooperatively and I think there's some other modes as well, maybe a solo mode. Um, so I like that because they kind of did that a bit with Magic Maze where you would introduce more complex elements as you go and it's a really nice way to just get straight in, enjoy the basics of a game, realize that you like it, and then you're like, yeah, that was a quick game, let's go again, add a new thing, and every time it's different, and you're sort of getting better at it, but also the game's getting more challenging. Uh, so yeah, excited about this one, that's Bad Bones. And number 12 is Escape Tales, The Awakening from Board and Dice. And this is an escape room game, albeit it's described as an escape room inspired game that doesn't actually have a time limit. So that's a bit interesting. So far, every escape room game I've played has a time limit because that's really how escape room games Work. That's how escape rooms work, the, that tension. Um, I love escape rooms as an experience. I also like Exit the Game and Unlock. Those are the two escape room board games that I've played. So I'm always interested to try other ones and I'm, I will be hopefully trying Deckscape as well, which is another one that's out, um, that's been out for a while. This one is changing things obviously with no time limit, but it's also trying to make things a bit more story driven. And that's appealing because generally escape room games are quite simple. You're just completing puzzles. Uh, they try to tack on a theme, it never fully works. In this one, there's quite an interesting theme of a dad is trying to rescue her daughter. She is in a coma and there's something he has to somehow rescue her from that coma by solving puzzles, I guess. Um, I like the I like the idea of that theme. I just hope that it does come through um, in, in a way that is satisfying. So um, I understand that it's longer. I think it's I suppose a bit more of a campaign. Um, so maybe escape room isn't the best way to look at it. But I understand that you can pause it really easily. So you might play it for a couple of hours and then go back to it, which makes me think of time stories and I can certainly get on board with that. So that's Escape Tales The Awakening. Number 11 is Celestia A Little Initiative. This is an expansion for Celestia, which is one of my favorite games 
I've covered this in my top 10 Christmas gifts video. If you want to learn more about the game, it's a push your luck game where you're all in this ship. You're trying to fly up into the clouds to get the most points and you're trying to go as far as possible, but the ship might crash, in which case everyone loses everything. So you can choose to get out along the way and get some points, but you want to stay in and get more points later on. But if you crash before you get out, then you'll get nothing. It's a brilliant game that has this brilliant level of bluffing to it. And they had an expansion, I think it was last year, um, called A Little Help, which was great, and added these special cards and allowed you to have cards that could help the captain. This one adds a new ship effectively, it adds a rowboat that is kind of behind the ship that I think one person can get out and get into that rowboat and then they're on their own. So that's kind of good because then you're in charge of your own destiny, but of course you've still got to face the, the, the troubles that are in the sky and play certain cards and now you've only got your own hand to play from. Uh, I believe it also adds some more special cards. They're always great. Um, so it doesn't seem like it's a big expansion, really just a, a small addition to a game that I really love. So absolutely excited for Celestia, a little initiative. 10 is Deadwood 1876. And it's another one in their line of Dark Cities games, which come in these amazing wooden uh, book things that flip open. Uh, they got really nice components um, and I enjoy both of those games, hence I have them. Salem uh, 1692 is a hidden traitor game uh, set in the Salem Witch Trials and Tortuga 1667 is a team hidden team game uh, where you're playing as pirates. Both of them are simple but different in that social deduction genre. Um, Deadwood seems to be in a similar vein, certainly a kind of short interactive game. In this game, you're, you're playing on teams, but then and you're trying to be the team who gets the most gold, but then ultimately you're going to be show, having a showdown with your teammates. So there's only ever one winner. And so it's a case of during the game, do you trust your teammate to put enough effort into trying to make the team win? Or are they trying to kind of secure things away so that they will um, do the best in the showdown later on. So it, it, I, I like that kind of dynamic of are you being a good enough teammate or uh, are you trying to backstab early on kind of thing. I like the packaging of these games. I like that they, the, I like the conceit behind this series and I like the previous game. So I'm really hoping that I like this one too. That is Deadwood 1876. And number nine is Camelot from Eggertspieler. This is a reprint, a second edition of a game that won the Spiel des Jahres, I think a few years ago. Um, it's certainly a family game that I really love and was in my top 10 games to play at Christmas. It's a betting game. There's a camel race going on and you're trying to bet on which camel is gonna win. And the really the main problem I ever had with Camelot was it's kind of an ugly box and just wasn't that appealing to kind of sell to people as a gateway game or to, to try and get people into board games with. It also had this cool little cardboard dice dispenser, but that I, I think wasn't always that reliable. Now they're bringing it out with a nice new box cover and new components. It has this wonderful plastic pyramid that you dispense the dice with. Um, it has a, a board that pops up like a pop-up book which is just incredible. I've never seen that before. And uh, it also has some new additions to the game. So it has a camel that runs backwards. So I'm intrigued to try that, but really I'm just excited about a new, prettier version of a game that I really love. That's Camel Up from Eggertspieler. And number eight is Walls of York from Crania Creations, who tend to make some really interesting games. I've uh, last year they made A Tale of Pirates, which was a game that I love. This one seems to be inspired a bit from Roll and Write games, but it's more of a sort of proper board game to, uh, to be a little bit mean to Roll and Write games in that it has more kind of physical components. You're not just writing on a sheet of paper. The reason I say that is because you all have the same board and then dice uh, being rolled to tell you what walls, what shape of walls you can build this round and then you're building it onto your board. So you could you could all theoretically do the same thing just like in a roll and write game, but of course you won't 
and then the differences between you will determine who wins the game. What you're doing is a spatial game of building these walls to try and protect your city from the Vikings. And uh, so at the start of the game, it will determine what the king wants in terms of in your city. So on this board, there's a, a bunch of different squares that show different things, maybe like churches and stuff like that. And so you'll be trying to house certain parts of the city into these walls that you're building, but you'll be really hamstrung by the dice that is telling you the L shape or the shape that you have to place walls in this round. And so you'll be taking these plastic wall pieces and connecting them uh, to previously built parts of your wall to then end up uh, creating this city. And you also will, um, I think, lose points for having too many Vikings in your city. So what I really like about it is that it's a simple game with simultaneous play that feels a little bit like a roll and write game. I, I quite like the theme on this one. I, I, I like the idea of the historical thing of trying to protect the city of York. And it, it looks quite nice as well. So that's Walls of York. And number seven is Men at Work from Pretzel Games. Pretzel Games brought us Junk Art, which is one of my favorite games of all time. It's my favorite dexterity game, and that is what Men at Work is. It's also a stacking game like Junk Art, but that's pretty much where the similarities end. Uh, because in this game, you are building up girders. You are building a construction site. Uh, so you've got construction workers with their hard hats on uh, that are sort of like meeples. You've got these big long girders and you've also got bricks and you are together building the same construction site with these girders, but you're working competitively. So you're, you're being told what to do by cards. I really like that in a dexterity game where there's there's something that you're, you're kind of given a challenge for the turn. Um, and I love dexterity games where you're all doing something together. That was really my only, one of my only issues with Meeple Circus was that you, you had your own thing. I like th this communal uh, dexterity game and where you're being challenged to be the best. So at a certain point in the game, you will be able to win employee awards and you do that by placing the highest most piece in the construction. Of course, that's gonna be really hard and so much more likely to, for things to fall off. If things do fall off, you lose a safety certificate and that's kind of like a life. And then if uh, you lose too many, you're either eliminated or the game's over. So you, you're trying to balance being really good to win those awards, but obviously not making mistakes so that you, you don't lose the game completely. It's got a really nice look to it, just like all pretzel games. And it sounds like a blast. Um, I love dexterity games and I, I really like the idea of this, um, the theme as well just works perfectly. So that's Men at Work. And number six is Fuji from Feuerland Spieler. This is a cooperative game. The thing that's most exciting about this is from designer Wolfgang Warsh. He is the hot new board game designer in the world right now. He designed The Mind, which is a brilliant uh, card game that I love. Uh, he also did Ganshon Clever um, and uh, the Queldenberg game that uh, was nominated for Spiel des Jahres and I think that one won the Kennerspiel. He is uh, just a huge name and he seems to be making interesting designs and I think that Fuji is another one of those. This is a cooperative game, I love cooperative games. Uh, uses dice. I really like the theme of it as well. It's about escaping Mount Fuji. Basically, the volcano's erupted. You're trying to run away. That's that's a really evocative theme for me. What's interesting is the mechanisms sound very different. You're rolling dice behind a shield, and then you can't communicate what dice you have with your teammates. And the trouble with that is that if you want to move onto a tile, your dice have to be better than your than the player to your left and your right, but of course you don't know what dice they have. Um, so I'm not sure whether there'll be some subtle communication there or whether it's a bit of gambling or timing as to when you play your dice. Um, but it sounds sort of really frustrating wanting to play something, wanting to run away from this volcano and then you're not able to because of your neighbors either side of you are kind of holding you back. They're obviously trying to help you because it's a cooperative game. So um, 
definitely sounds different. And um, if there's one thing that this Wolfgang guy is seemingly good at is is bringing new experiences to board gaming. So um, really excited to try this. This is Fuji. At five is Pandemic Fall of Rome from Z-Man Games. Pandemic is one of my favorite games of all time. And I've enjoyed Pandemic Iberia. Some of the other reimaginings of Pandemic haven't been that interesting to me, but I like the theme here. Uh, it, Rome is on its last legs. You're trying to create alliances with tribes whilst being attacked by barbarians that you're fighting off using dice. That's an interesting addition to Pandemic. It's It sounds like there's a fair few changes. I like that the co-designer here is Paolo Mori. He makes a lot of games that I really like and he's certainly well respected. So it's a case of loving Pandemic, interested in the theme and just intrigued to see what they do. There, there, there is a certain level of sort of diminishing enthusiasm in always playing a similar-ish game, but I do love cooperative games and I, I, I'm keeping an open mind and I, I'm, I'm hopeful with this one. That's Pandemic Fall of Rome. A number four is Trap Words from Czech Games Edition. This is a party game from the publisher that brought us Codenames and Pictomania. So immediately I want to try it before I've even read the description, although <laughs> I have read the description. And the uh, it sounds fascinating. It, it basically sells itself as the game Taboo, which was a game that I played a lot as a kid. In Taboo, you are having to describe to your team a word but without saying certain words that are also on the card because they would make it too easy. And so if you hit one of those words, a buzzer goes and you, you kind of fail that card. So it's about explaining something, but sort of having to go around the houses. In trap words, it's like taboo, but the other team are coming up with the, the trap words, the words that you can't say. So you don't, you can't even see them whilst you're playing. And that is amazing because you're obviously having to think about how people would describe things. I really I really like that. Uh, but you're also having, when you're playing as the clue giver, you're having to sort of either go straight down the middle because maybe they wouldn't go with the obvious, or you're trying to go around the houses massively, but with no idea of what those words are. And then I can imagine that that feeling of when when you say something that seems so unusual, to describe the word that you're trying to describe, but it's a trap word and they get you. Oh, that must be so frustrating. I, I think, I, I can't believe that I won't love this game and that's why it's so high in the list. Uh, there are loads of interesting sounding party games coming out at Essen and I love to go and try them out and I will certainly bring, be bringing uh, plenty back, more, that, more than that are on this list, but with a party game, so much of it can be about experience and you never really know which ones are the gems. I found some amazing hidden gems at Essen over the years, like When I Dream and Ha, huh, and ones that I'm not thinking about right now. And I bet there, there are some other really good ones out there. So I'm going to be trying to play as many as I can, but I think Trap Words is a real bankable one for me. And number three is Troll Fjord. This is from a Porter Games and Zock Verlag working together. And we're starting to get, we're, we're so high up in the list now that we have got multiple great reasons to want to try a game. First of all, you've got the designers, Christian Amundsen Osby and Eilif Svensson, who designed Avenue, one of my favorite games of all time, also known as Kokoro. And uh, you've also got Zoc, who make these crazy games. And this is certainly a crazy sounding game from the, uh, the face of it. The exciting twist of it is that it has a dexterity element where you are hitting a hammer against a cube tower to get cubes to knock out, to, to fall out. So there's a whole sort of family strategy board game around this um, where you have your, uh, your trolls and uh, taking various actions, but, uh, but with this dexterity, I suppose a bit of a, a luck element, although there's seems to be skill involved in terms of how many times you hit the hammer and how, obviously how hard you hit it. You're trying to get not too many cubes to fall out, but probably a certain number. Actually reminds me of a game that Zoc had last year at Essen called Shootools, where you were trying to pour things out of a cup. I found that game quite hard and was probably a bit lighter than this one. It sounds amazing, if it works, of course. 
and the fact that there's this whole um, strategy game around it, um, th there's uh, the idea that you can try and position yourself so you can piggyback off of other people hitting the, the cube tower if you're in the same place at the same time. Um, little things like that. So yeah, there's so many reasons to want to try this one. That's why it's so high up on the list. That's Troll Fjord. And number two is Showtime from Pegasus Spieler. This is where I get to the point where I'm cheating slightly because the next two games I've played, Showtime I haven't played a full game of, but I had a little try at UK Games Expo. And I love the theme of this. It's a simple card game about trying to seat people in a cinema so that they are happy. Uh, so you've got a deck of, they're all identical decks of people that would go to the cinema. So you've got kids and old people and a couple and loads of different characters and every card works thematically with that, so they score thematically. So for example, you, of course, you don't want to sit in front of the kid that is kicking the back of the seat. So you would put that kid maybe in front of another player's character. You want to have the couple together. You, the, there's somebody that needs to go to the toilet. They need to sit on the end or otherwise they're going to annoy the people that they have to walk past. There's a really tall guy. You don't want to sit behind that person. So you're placing these cards um, out on uh, in front of the screen. You also want to be nearer the screen. And I think in the middle, there's obviously better seats at a cinema. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it just works really thematically, but it's so simple in the way that it plays um, that... I can imagine this one being a really fun, maybe a filler, but certainly a gateway card game and really appealing for non-gamers as well because it's so accessible in the way it plays, but also everyone just immediately gets the idea of it. So I can't wait to get my hands on Showtime. And number one is Blue Lagoon. This is from Blue Orange Games. And this is designed by Reiner Knizia, the guy who has designed hundreds of games, many, many, great games that I love like High Society and Through the Desert. And this one is actually quite similar to Through the Desert. It's almost like a reimagining of it. That game is something like 20 years old. Blue Lagoon is a tactical, thinky game that plays quite fast. Um, it's abstract really, um, but it's got these wonderful islands. You are trying to place down your people to reach certain resources and you, there are a number of different ways you can score points and you're really trying to keep an eye out for all of them. So you're placing your workers down to try and connect to resources. You want to collect sets of them, um, but you also want to create this path that connects as many islands as possible. You want to have majority on those islands. You want to be on, uh, be represented on as many, many islands as possible. So this lots of different things to think about and you're trying to do them all at once but watching out for other players blocking you off it can be quite cutthroat i played this game in its entirety at uk games expo and it plays quickly but there is stuff to think about and it yeah it, i do like it i wouldn't say it's sort of interactive i'm not it's not take that as such but you can see what people want to do and you can try and stop them of course you might want to it might help you to to kind of go in that direction at the same time as well. So it's not always pure hate decisions. It plays in two phases where you'll be um, placing down these huts that then stay on the board. Everything then wipes off and you go again. So the placement of those huts is, is really important as well to that second phase. Um, when I play this, I lost miserably, um, but that tells you that it's still a fun game and I just want to come back to it. And I really like the experience of it. And like I say, it, it's like Through the Desert. So if you like this one, you'll probably like Blue the Goon, or though you might decide that you don't need both in your collection. Both really fun games though. Uh, so yeah, that's my number one pick. That's Blue Lagoon from Blue Orange Games. Those are the games that I'm most excited about that I haven't already played that are coming out at Spiel 18 in Essen. I can't wait to go and pick them up along with a whole bunch of other ones and I'll be doing a haul video of all the games that I pick up when I get back so you can see all the games that I, uh, that I got and I'll tell you a bit more about them and then hopefully over the coming weeks and months I'll be reviewing them and talking about them and um, obviously playing them. <laughs> I am doing another video about 
the games that I've already played that will be coming out at Essen, the games that I can recommend that I'm really excited to share with you. So please look out for that video um, because it's going to be on the channel in the next sort of few days in the lead up to Essen. If you found this video useful, please consider supporting Actual Lol at patreon.com forward slash Actual Lol. And if you're finding the channel for the first time, please subscribe to see more videos like this. I'm John Perkis. Thanks for watching.